The latest United Nations Climate Conference is again exploiting the young to lecture us about the end of the world. This student, believe it or not, is a climate advisor to the UN boss. And the UN does this all the time, using even children to tell us that global warming is destroying the world. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. But a reality check. Going viral on social media is a clip that the BBC shot of children 56 years ago, also worrying about death and destruction. Uh, this is them describing the world they expected by the year 2000, except this time the danger was the popular scare of those days, overpopulation. Well, I think that it'll be so, it'll be so overpopulated that there'll all be wars, all the nuclear explosions and everything. It'll make the Earth, you know, too much radiation on it. It'll become too hot to live on. I think that there'll be no life at all, really, on, on the Earth. People would all be squashed together so much there won't be any fun or anything. And people will be rationed to the amount of things they can have because if they had too many things, it would just squash their houses and they, they just wouldn't be room for them. I think the population will have gone up so much that um, either everyone will be living in sort of big domes in the Sahara or they'll be under sea. Joining me on Trending Now is Daisy Cousins, a Sky News contributor with her own YouTube channel. Daisy, what did that clip tell you? Well, it told me, Andrew, that while human knowledge changes over time, certainly human nature doesn't. And in the case of children, we can see from that clip that they have always been impressionable, imaginative, and also prone to absorbing things that adults say and then augmenting them about 10 million times. I mean, you can hear that in that you're talking about being sort of squashed together. It all is a reminiscent of that particular environmental scare at the time, but it's blown out to these irrational proportions. And it's so similar to what we see with kids nowadays who talk about climate change in terms of frying and burning and being able to walk out and being unable to walk outside and being unable to live on the planet and everyone is going to die. It's what the climate alarmist is saying, but blown up about a million times to sort of childish um, imaginative proportions. Um, now, I don't know, Andrew, whether the overpopulation brigade in the 1950s was deliberately pushing this onto children. Maybe that was just by osmosis. They didn't have the mass communication then. I don't know. But in the case of climate alarmists, they very, very deliberately deliberately push this fear-mongering onto children in order to frighten them as a way to advance their agenda. And they do this for two reasons. The first is to emotionally blackmail other adults into joining their cause because they can say, oh, oh dear, think of the children, look how sad they are. And the second reason is to make it almost impossible for their opponents to attack them because it's very hard to criticise a movement with children on the front lines. It is incredibly evil and unscrupulous and it is just extraordinary to see Andrew, how history, history repeats itself and the victims here are the children.